Hi, I'm Daniela. Today's video is the last video, the fifth, in our workshop for slow stitching an autumn pumpkin. Now this pumpkin is a little more in depth than my usual slow stitching projects, which are just little ideas to spark your creativity. Today's is the final video in this workshop, which is a little more involved. Now we've done a lot of shading with our stitches. We've made hundreds of them already. And it creates a beautifully stitched pumpkin with nice variations and lots of texture. Today's video is where we finish off the final details. We'll even add some foliage to our work. So this is where you can choose your colors that complement whatever colors you selected for your pumpkin. In today's video, I'm going to use deep reds and oranges. I think it gives a nice pop against that blue for the pumpkin. So let's get started. So in a previous video, we stitched our pumpkin after using the fabric collage. Now there are a few little lines here remaining just from my erasable pen. So I'm going to take a hot iron and just press them down just to get rid of them because I think it leads for a cleaner result. And then we can add our sketches for our foliage. So that's coming along very nicely and I'm very pleased with the way it looks. So now it's time to start deciding if we want to add foliage or just trim or just stitching. So you could stop here if you like. On the other two examples here, I have some foliage peeking out from behind the pumpkin and I have little trim and elements here and I like the way that looks. What I'd like to do though is create just a little bit of foliage coming out from the bottom here and the top just to draw the eye across the page. So I like the way this would look. So I just kind of make a light sketch, again, knowing that I can remove anything I don't want. And I'm just gonna create my little foliage here. So I have my line, my leaves, do three leaves here. Again, just simple shapes right on top of the fabric. And then over here, I'll do the same thing. I have my line, my shape, and I can remove any leaf or any ink afterwards. So I have some very interesting shapes. Just two, I might add a third one or even just a partial leaf here, two prong leaf. And again, I wanna start playing with my colors. So I'm gonna move these colors off and now I wanna use my traditional colors. So I have them all ready to go. I like to start with my darkest color and here I still have six strands of floss threaded on my needle with just a little knot at the end. And I'm gonna start here and just create that chain that all my leaves are gonna go on. I can use the same stitch that I used, the split stitch, but I think I'm gonna do it a little differently and create that stem stitch. So to do that, I stitch down, pull my stitch so I have a little loop, it's not pulled taut yet, and then I make a stitch in between the front and the back of that stitch. And then when I pull it taut, that thread comes out. So I'll just carry on, continuing up that stem of that leaf. I'm using the six strands because I want a nice thick result. But you can vary this as you like. Again, because I'm coming up and not going through my thread, I get kind of like a twisted result. And I find that very appealing. So there I have my stem. I'll show you on one leaf what I like to do is I just create a boundary of that leaf. And you can use a straight stitch or a back stitch. So I make my first stitch. And then I follow that guide that I made, since I'm happy with the sketch, and I'm gonna stitch all around that leaf. And again, I'm using all six strands of floss, so it's quite chunky and thick. If you wanted to smooth the result, you'd use less strands. I'm just gonna finish all the way around this leaf and then you can decide how you want to fill it in. You could fill it in completely like I've done on some leaves on various samples but I really want the background to show through. So after I make my outline 
I'm going to once again use my floss to fill it in. So I'll make just a few little stitches coming out from that vein. Just going up the length of that leaf. And therefore I get like a little skeleton leaf. And I can leave it like that. But what I'm going to do is take that other color, that next color, orange, the deep color, and here I only have four strands. I'll knot this off so it doesn't get in the way. And then with this color, I'm just going to make a few little stitches to fill in the leaf. It's not going to be complete. I still want some of the background fabric to show through, but I get a very interesting result. I get a lot of texture and I can fill it in as much or as little as I want. So that's pretty intriguing. I'm going to fill in the remaining leaves using the same method. I'll fill this sprig in with the same colors. And then for this one, I think I'm going to use the other two colors and I'll continue that down here and I'll show you the results when it's done. So there's the completed stitched pumpkin with the collage background. Now the slow stitching component comes into play. It's not just embroidery, but you're making the stitches as you go. You're following a very rough pattern. Just to finish the piece off, I put just a little skeleton leaf here to pick up that really light color that we use, the color of the background. I'm thinking of stitching just a border around all the pieces here, maybe a half inch border in very large stitches, just around to give that more of a feel. And if I do, I'll post that on my Instagram so you can see how that turned out. So that's the completed slow stitched autumn pumpkin. We've made it to the end of the series for this year, 2022. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you create a pumpkin, please post it on Instagram. Be sure to tag me. In the comments below, leave any thoughts you have about this workshop or any ideas you have for future workshops. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for joining me today.